The Legend of Zelda games have always featured memorable side characters to fill its world with. Tears of the Kingdom is no different. In fact, there's some side characters from Breath of the Wild, which you can check up on the sequel of the game and see what they're up to now. Though for me, many of the characters I was meeting for the first time, and I want to go over my favorites and some of the favorite side quests associated with these characters. Thanks so much for liking the video and subscribing to stay tuned for more, and don't forget to let me know your thoughts as well. I'd love to hear about your favorite side characters you've come across in your playthroughs. Firstly comes my adoration for Pen, my coworker. After setting sights on this massive pelican-inspired Rito at Lookout Landing, I knew this was a design worthy of main character status or at least a memorable side character, and I was not disappointed. This woman roasts me into working with him as a newsboy, and because the crucial 48 hours have gone by since Princess Zelda disappeared, we only have rumors to go off of, as well as whatever the hell the tiny birds whispered a pen at each and every stable. I think some people might have been soured by this long stable quest, therefore sour with pen, but I can't bring myself to not grin when I see him strike that pose and holler out that sapo or whatever the hell kind of noise he makes because he wants me to tell me to soar long. It's the same voice acting for each language with just the text dialogue changing. In the Japanese text, I believe he's saying Sarabado, that's what I think the katakana says. Because Sites did use his name, Pen, but with the Sarabado in parentheses, which led me to the knowledge that you can actually see Pen's cute, cute eyes when he barely takes his goggles off to wipe at them. I can't unsee what I have just seen. Caliban, I'll call her that, is a Gerudo woman who is hoping to find true love. The one, the one and only though of her dreams. And to do this, she has been dropping glass bottles with little messages inside down to the sewers below to float down in the water for such a vow to one day reveal themselves to her. You may have seen these bottles like I had and been excited to speak with this woman about these bottles when you first came across them. But once you arrive to speak to her, she tells you she's busy right now. She seems to be extremely dedicated to her perch sitting and waiting for the vow of her dreams to hear her words. You might be thinking, you're the vow of her dreams. When I first encountered Caliban, I was unsure how I could show her that her messages were received. At least someone got to read them. But because there was more to do and Gerudo Town needed saving, I forgot. But let's give her peace of mind that her messages have been received. You may go back down there into the water below and find these bottles again. With the Ultra Hand ability, you can grab one of them and move them around. Then comes the task of getting one of these up to the surface and up to where Caliban is. I don't know why my first intuition was to attach the bottles, attach to a rope, this other big bottle, and then like try and somehow bring it upward. But the bottle busted and then I tried other things and it wasn't working and I was getting strange camera movements and shots before realizing you need to simply rewind the bottle upwards and then catch it up there with Ultra Hand. That's at least one way to do it. Read it again, right in front of her. It's you at long last. You, the Vo reading this letter, are the Vo I was fated to meet and I am the Vi you were destined for. You must hurry and rescue me. I'm locked away from the outside world. Do not worry, though. I will send all of my love to you until you can come and find me. Stay safe and know that we will meet soon. It's our destiny, after all. Well, well, well. Finally, she realizes if you've got it. I can't wait any long. Tell me. Tell me who you are, who I know you to be. Wait. Don't say anything yet. I'm not ready for the outside world holds for what it holds. I still haven't mastered all the lessons from the Vaughn U class or the old cooking class. You can wait a little longer for our love to fully bloom, can't you? Of course you can. Okay, that's settled. Now I need to get cracking on all there is to do. First, to the cooking pot. And uh, that uh, she does. She gets right up. She tries to walk even though the bottle is in her way. My bad. But then she goes around like any strong woman might. And she walks as the little kids scamper in. Maybe today's the day. I don't know what that means, but I don't care. I am watching the love of my life go ahead. Dolly, she's also going to be late. She's going to be more late because I'm blocking the path. You can try all you want, but you're going to be late to class. Yeah, once you actually go see her again, she's yours. But she still has her duties here, like cooking, and she will gladly cook you a meal. A 
rarer meal at that. Cook she does, including cooking the meals that are harder to get. And you can always come visit your new sweetheart from time to time, and she'll always be happy to see you. Nice. I'm just happy <laughs> to get her out of the shelter now. Next is a dad-daughter Zora duo. I believe that they aren't new characters, but my first experience with them in this game is right where you meet Sidon. This dialogue hit me like bricks when I got a chance to speak to Riven. Is his name Rivan? Riven? And he can tell me about the lake I'm supposed to be visiting, but he's completely beaming with pride over his daughter and can't help himself from just thinking aloud about how she's been selected for this guard duty. She's already so young, being under 100 years old still, and it's such a great opportunity for her, and she's rising in the ranks, and he's just thrilled and even wanted to go check on her to see how things are going. I just loved seeing how happy he was and how proud he was of his daughter Dunma. What? These two didn't ever vanish from my character memory bank like other side NPCs do. I recognize them immediately in Zora's domain and get thrilled to see them working side by side and I still remember this tiny detail to this day. These two make me happy. There's another Zora couple I like along with the quest associated with them. So there's a guy named Frank. First of all, that name, holy shit. It. I love it. And his wife, May. May seems to be very happy-go-lucky, likes to explore, but Frank is having an internal crisis because his wife has been gone for a little too long and with suspicious words that were left. And once you find May, you realize she's just up here trying to get some delicious fish and she hurries back. I don't know why, but I just like these two. Now, one side character in Gerudo Town is responsible for making you the Sword of the Seven and stuff. After all that, after you rescue her. And that's Isha. You got to go save her from a Maldugo in the beginning that's out in the wild sandy west. And once I laid eyes on her, I was like, this is this is such a character. Uh, yeah, I like her. Okay. Uh, once you do that, you return her. And then, you know, as a thank you, she wants to craft that legendary weapon, the Gerudo weapon for you. And that's fantastic. That's how you get it. I mean, you get the like legendary weapon from the Eagle Bow from Tay and then you get the legendary light skill trident from Dento. You know, that's just fine. And like, they stick out as important characters because you need them for these things, but I don't know. I just really like Isha a lot more. Listen, like I said, there's so many different little characters and so many different little details to look out for. And I just adore seeing all of it. Like I said, I'm super curious to hear about your interactions that stuck out to you, the memorable ones, all that stuff. So please let me know about them down in the comments and thank you above all for watching. I appreciate it and I hope you have a really great day. Bye-bye.